Part 1 You will hear a telephone conversation between an employee of an airline company and a customer. You have 30 seconds to look at questions 1 to 6. GB Airlines, uh, this is Kyle speaking. How can I help? Hi, my name is Matt Walsh. I'm calling on behalf of Mr. John Sparrow to claim expenses for a delay in his flight last week. Good morning, Mr. Walsh. Uh, thank you for calling. Could you please tell me the flight number and the date of departure? The date of departure was the 24th of January, 2016. I'm afraid I don't have the flight number in front of me at the moment. OK, that's all right. One moment. Uh, could you tell me where was Mr. Sparrow departing from? He was departing from Athens. Uh, is that Athens, Greece or Athens, Georgia? Athens, Greece. Right. And what was the destination? It was Heathrow, London. Right. We've got two flights from Athens to London, Heathrow, on the 24th of January 2016. Was it the 3.25pm flight or the 9.45pm? It was the later one, 9.45. OK, so the flight number is GB1011. Right, OK. OK, yes. I can see that Mr Sparrow's flight was cancelled and he was booked on the next flight on the 25th of January at 3.25pm. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. According to our system, one of my colleagues spoke with Mr Sparrow on the phone on the 24th to inform him of the cancellation and offered to book a hotel for him for the night, but Mr Sparrow preferred to book one himself. Yes, because he didn't want to stay near the airport, as the next flight was in the afternoon. Yes, of course. Uh, could you tell me which hotel he stayed at? Yes, he stayed at the Hypnos Hotel. Oh, uh, could you spell that for me? Of course. That's H-Y-P-N-O-S. Right. Uh, thank you for that. And could you please tell me how much the total cost was for the night? Sure. It was 73 euros. Right. Uh, do you have a copy of the receipt for that? Yes, of course. Would you like me to send it to you? Uh, yes, please. Can I email a picture of it to you? Absolutely. Uh, the email address is refunds at gbairlines.co.uk. Great, thank you. No problem. Uh, were there any other expenses you wish to claim? Actually, yes. There was also the taxi ride to the airport and the taxi ride back the next day. Right. And what was the total cost? Um, the first taxi ride was 53 euros and the second one was 42. So 63, 73, 83. Yeah, so the total was 95 euros. I'll send you the receipt for those as well. Thank you. Uh, are there any other expenses? No, I think that's it. You now have 30 seconds to look at questions 7 to 10. Excellent. So if you could please send us the receipts for the hotel and the taxi rides, and after we receive them it should take about 48 hours for the funds to reach Mr Sparrow's account. Perfect. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Is there anything else I can help you with? Actually, yes. There's one more thing. Um, Mr Sparrow complained about the meal during the flight. He said that it was a bit bland. Right. So he asked me if it was possible to switch to a different meal option for his upcoming flight to Kiev next week. Right, of course. Uh, just give me a minute, please. Right, I see that Mr Sparrow had the light meal option for his flight to London, and you would like to change that. Uh, what would you like to change it to? What are the other options? We've got 12 different meal options. Uh, would you like me to list all of them for you? Well, Mr Sparrow has told me that he would prefer something without meat. 
How many of these do not contain meat? We've got three meal options without meat. Uh, we've got the vegetarian option, the vegan option, and the Asian vegetarian. What's the difference? There's a variety of different dishes served with each option. Uh, for example, next week, the vegetarian option will be a small spinach and feta cheese pie, a bread roll, a salad, and tropical fruit. And the vegan option? The vegan option doesn't include any dairy products, and it also doesn't include fowl, eggs, or honey. Uh, I'm afraid I don't have the specific menu for this week, but I can email it to you as soon as it becomes available. Oh, could you do that? That would be great. Yes, of course. Uh, I can email you a detailed description of all the meal options, if you like. Yes, please. No problem. Uh, please do not forget to call us back to change the meal option. Uh, you need to do that 48 hours before the departure time for international flights and 24 hours for domestic flights. So 48 hours for this one then? Yes, exactly. Perfect. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Um, transatlantic flights require 48 hours. All flights within Europe require 24 hours. So in this case, you will need to call us 24 hours in advance. Um, I apologize for that. Okay, great. So, could I please have your email address so I can send you the menus? Certainly. It's matt.walsh at sparrowlimited.com. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. First, now you have part some two. time to look at questions part 11 two. to 16. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 16. Good afternoon. Hello. How can I help you? I'd like to make a transfer, please. You want to transfer some money? That's fine. Let me just bring up some details. Right. Here we are. Can you tell me your name, please? It's Alice Del Tour. OK. And your date of birth? 20th of February, 1982. Right, and for security, can I have the first letter of your password? It's V. And the fifth letter? That's F. Fine. Now, where do you want to make the transfer to and from? I'd like to send money from my current account abroad. Which country are you sending it to? To China. My boyfriend is on holiday there, and he's run out of money. Oh dear. China, OK. Now, there are several ways to do this. We can do it by credit card, by electronic transfer, by cheque or by banker's draft. Um, I'm not sure. What's the best way? Well, that all depends. The simplest way is by cheque, really. I just write the cheque and send it. Yes, but it can be very slow and take a long time for the money to clear. Between three to four weeks. How soon do you need the money to get there? I'd like it to get there in the next couple of weeks. So really, sending a cheque is going to be too slow. Yes, I think so. Let's look at electronic transfer then. This usually takes between two and five working days. That's two to five days. Working or business days. If you send it on Friday, it will get there the following Friday at the latest. I see. That's much better. Yes, but we do charge a fee for this. We charge a flat fee of £21, and on top of that, the receiving bank may charge a fee, and an agent may also charge you for transferring the money between banks. So, how much is it altogether? We can't give you an exact amount. You need to check it with the receiving bank and any agents that they use. I see. Also, you can send it in sterling or dollars from here, but there will be an additional fee depending on the exchange rate when you convert it into renminbi. So, there will be another charge too? I'm afraid so. 
Does it make any difference if I set it in dollars or sterling? It could make a difference according to which currency has the best exchange rate. The other difference is this. If you send dollars, the amount goes through the US clearing system. We send the money to our branch in London. They then send it to our branch in New York and the New York branch sends it to the bank in China. It goes all around the world then. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. What about if I send sterling? In that case, we send it to our branch in London. From there, it may go directly to China, unless the bank in China has an agent in London, in which case we transfer it to the London agent and they send the money on to China. So how do I proceed with the transfer? OK, first we'll need some details about the beneficiary from you. The who? The beneficiary, the person receiving the money. OK, what do you need to know? We'll need the full name of the beneficiary and their account number. OK. You need to tell us the name of the bank in China and the address of the branch. We also need the bank's sort code and the SWIFT number. What's a SWIFT number? Basically, it's an interbank code. It helps banks identify each other through a unique code number. OK. And that's spelt? S-W-I-F-T. SWIFT. And the final thing we need is the reason for sending the money. You need a reason from me? I just told you my boyfriend's run out of money. Well, we don't need a reason. The receiving government needs to know why the money is entering the country and we have to be able to tell them. OK. So, from me you need the bank's name, the address of the branch, the sort code and SWIFT number, the beneficiary's name and account number and a reason for sending the payment. Yes, that's correct. OK, so I'll check these out and come back to you with them so we can go ahead with the transfer. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a conversation between two students who will discuss a project they're working on together. You have 30 seconds to look at questions 21 to 27. Hey Jess, glad you could make it. We've got a lot to discuss. Hi Matt. Yes, sorry I'm a bit late. I did bring all my notes with me. Yes, me too. Where shall we start? Well, I think it would be a good idea to clarify our objectives just one more time. Yes, good idea. OK, here we are. We need to record, photograph and identify the plant species in 10 one square meter plots. Does it say anything about where these plots should be and how they should be laid out? Ah, here it is. It says that all the plots need to be no more than 10 metres apart. And how do we choose them? Ah, this is the fun part. I remember this. Here we are. Make a one metre square frame using bamboo sticks available from the department stores. 
Yes, we've, we've already done that. I know, I'm just reading the whole section. Okay. One person stands roughly in the middle of the chosen area and throws the frame. The other person uses a tape to mark out the square where the frame landed and returns frame to thrower. The thrower then turns a few degrees on the spot and throws again. The thrower must turn slightly after each throw and vary the force of the throw until after the tenth throw they are pointing in almost the same direction as the first. That sounds a bit complicated. That's only because it's all in writing. It's just a simple throw, turn, throw, turn, throw, turn until we have ten squares. And I guess you want to do the throwing. Well, if you don't mind. I'm sure you'll be more accurate at marking the squares. Yes, I am sure I am, and I'm sure you've got a stronger throwing arm. You now have 30 seconds to look at questions 28 to 30. OK, good. We've got that sorted. Now we need to decide where to go. Yes, I've been thinking about that and I've brought the map. Ah, well done. I forgot mine. Now, I've identified three possible locations, but they've all got some disadvantages. OK, fire away. Well, the area around this lowland marsh could be interesting. There'll be a lot of interesting water plants here. Looks good. But what's the problem? Mainly that it's already a designated nature reserve, and I think there's already been a lot of research done here. Ah, I see. Well, I'd rather do something that's new and can be useful. I agree. That's why I identified this area further west. See, here, behind the beach. Oh yes, I see. That area there, where it's flat, but quite high. Exactly. If you look a bit further inland, you'll see that there are hills which will protect that area from strong north winds. I see. Excellent. But what's the problem? Just that it may not be very interesting. We know that the geology there is not conducive to a wide variety of plants. Mm, I agree. So what's your last idea? Well, I think this one is a bit of a winner, although I did want to show you the other two. Look up here, on the north coast. Where? See, this bay? Well, I know that there's been quite a lot of studies done here, but a bit further to the east, behind this headland. No one has ever looked at that. Well, I certainly couldn't see any studies. That is interesting. And the plant life could be a bit different because of the shelter from the wind the headland provides. Exactly. Brilliant, Jessica. That's a great idea. We'll go there. Thanks. Now all we have to decide is when is a good time. Well... That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Part 4 You are going to hear a talk on Anne Bonny, a female pirate. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 35. Now listen to the tape and answer the questions. Anne Bonny was one of the two most famous female pirates.
she sailed on the crew of Calico Jack Rackham. Anne was romantically involved with Calico Jack, but she could be counted as nonetheless as fearless as any other pirate. She was born in County Cork, daughter of an attorney and his maid. The lawyer left Ireland in disgrace, but found fortune in the Carolinas. There, he amassed a fortune and bought a large plantation. A ne'er-do-well pirate sailor named James Bonney married Anne in an attempt to steal the plantation but Anne's father instead disowned her. Bonnie then took Anne to the Bahamas, where he turned informer to Governor Woods Rogers, turning in any sailor he didn't like as a pirate for a handsome reward. Anne quickly grew to dislike her spineless husband and quickly caught the eye of one Calico Jack Rackham, a pirate of some renown. Governor Rogers had recently passed an amnesty for pirates, which left Bonnie out of work. The admiration between Anne and Calico was mutual. Calico Jack was a handsome man who knew how to spend money as well as steal it. Anne was a well-endowed lass with a fiery spirit and a temper that matched that of any man. In any event, Calico offered to buy Anne from Bonnie, but Bonnie instead took the matter up with Governor Rogers, who said that Anne was to be flogged and returned to her true husband. That night, Calico and Anne slipped out in the harbour, stole a sloop, and began a life of piracy together. Now look at questions 36 to 40. Thirty-six to forty. Anne fought in men's clothing, was an expert with pistol and cutlass, and considered as dangerous as any male pirate. She was fearless in battle, and often was a member of any boarding party. In October of 1720, retribution was close at hand. The governor of Jamaica, hearing of Calico's presence, sent an armed sloop to intervene and capture the captain and crew. Calico's ship, Revenge, was caught by surprise, and much to Anne's dismay, the pirates fought like cowards and were taken far too easily. Anne and Mary Reed were also captured, but, upon capture, confessed their sex and pleaded to be tried separately after they gave birth. Both women were pregnant at the time. Both received separate trials from the men, but were still sentenced to hang. Mary Reed escaped the hangman by dying from fever while in jail. Anne, however, received several stays of execution before mysteriously vanishing from official records. It is believed that her father, who had contacts in the island, forgave his daughter for her acts and ransomed her back to the Carolinas, where she assumed a new name and a new life. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.